11 balls remaining. What a moment this is. History in the making. India had never won a World Cup in the last 28 years. The nation on their feet. Dhoni finishes off in style. A magnificent strike into the crowd. India lift the World Cup. After 28 years, the parties start in the dressing room. And it's a, an Indian captain who's been absolutely magnificent in the night of the final. What a moment, no? I still get goosebumps thinking of it sometimes. Cricket for us Indians is more than just a sport. It's a religion. It's so fanatically followed in India because it's such an enjoyable sport. But if you think about it, it's quite technical as well. Because the way we play cricket, it changes based on like the location, the weather conditions and even the pitch. And you know, one of the more technical aspects of cricket is bowling. Mm-hmm. It involves a lot of complex physical phenomena. For example, conventional swing and reverse swing, they've been mastered by constant observation, repetition and innovation. Bowling is a skill that merges our interest in both sports and science. And we feel that a better understanding of the physics behind bowling helps players and fans appreciate the art of bowling more and possibly even get better at it. On today's episode, we explain the physics behind conventional swing and reverse swing. Hi, I'm Nikhilesh. And I'm Kushal. We're We're the the two two Brock scientists. A cricket ball is nothing but a sphere that's moving through the air. But the magic of swing bowling happens because of the stitches on the ball called the seams. When flowing air meets a surface, friction causes a boundary layer to form. On a smooth surface, the boundary layer is orderly and parallel and is called lamina. But if the surface is rough, the flow is agitated and it becomes chaotic and turbulent. This turbulent boundary layer has more energy. The seams on a cricket ball cause one side of the air to become turbulent while the other side is still lamina. There are two main types of swing balls. The conventional swing like Jimmy Anderson who bowls both the in-swing and out-swing or the reverse swing like Imran Khan. Now let's talk about conventional swing. Conventional swing occurs with a new ball. And to get conventional swing, you have to point the seam in the direction you want the ball to swing. So now let's consider the oncoming flow towards the ball. As the flow flows over the ball, over the smooth surface, the boundary layer stays laminar. Whereas as the flow goes over the seam, it becomes turbulent. And as you know, a turbulent boundary layer has more energy, which means it stays attached on the surface for a longer time. Whereas a laminar boundary layer separates. Due to this variation in the separation points, an imbalance in force is created which makes the ball move in the direction of the seam. Another important fact to keep in mind is that a wobbly seam is not conducive to swing bowling. This is why good bowlers always impart the right amount of backspin to keep the seam straight. Okay, so conventional swing happens with a new ball. But as the match progresses, the ball gets old and players keep shining one side of the ball So one side is smooth and the other side is rough. Reverse swing is extracted by bowlers who bowl at a fast pace. As speed increases, even a laminar boundary layer tends to become turbulent. When the speed of the ball is increased further, this transition from laminar to turbulent keeps moving forward, reducing the force imbalance with the other side. Now, both sides are turbulent, but the roughness on one side makes the floor more unstable and prone to separation. It is at this point that the direction of the force reverses and we get reverse swing. This means that for reverse swing, the bowler can even hold the seam straight. Now the flow is turbulent on both sides, but the roughness on one side causes the ball to swing towards the smoother side. Interesting fact. Technically, if the bowler balls fast enough with the seam angled, even a new ball can get reverse swing. Two types of balls are generally used in cricket the red ball in test cricket and the white balls in the shorter formats of the game. For the white ball, to make it more visible, extra layers of coating are applied on it, as a consequence of which it becomes smoother. This extra smoothness promotes laminar flow on the side with no seams and causes an extra imbalance, which makes the ball to swing much more. Okay, so we've talked about the position of the seam being critical to the swing. But is there an exact number we can put on the angle of the seam? Research has shown that if you hold the seam at around 20 degrees, 
and ball at around 110 km per hour, which is medium pace, you get the most swing. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. As a recap, conventional swing occurs with a new ball and moves in the direction of the seam. And reverse swing happens generally in an old ball and the swing happens towards the smoother side. Make sure you observe how the ball swings in the next match. And finally, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! Bye.